Hello again and welcome to another installment in our Library Research for CST 300 video series. I'm Jenny Dale, I use she, her pronouns, and I'm your Communication Studies Librarian. My goals for this video, um, by the end I hope that you'll feel comfortable accessing Communication and Mass Media Complete or CMMC through the library website and through your CST 300 research guide. I hope you feel comfortable creating a basic search using a theory and a context in Communication and Mass Media Complete. I feel comfortable locating a primary research article in the database. And then I hope you feel comfortable emailing or saving the permalink to an article so that you can access it again later on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head to the library homepage that is library.uncg.edu and I want to show you two different ways that you can access Communication and Mass Media Complete. The first is to click this databases link in the big red box. So a database is a searchable collection of information. And in the case of CMMC, Communication and Mass Media Complete, it is a searchable collection of scholarly sources in the field of communication studies. So I can navigate to it through the alphabet or I can search communication. You can see I've done this before. Um, and it is the first one that pops up. So that's one way that I can get here. This may look familiar to you if you've used any other databases from the same company. They tend to work the same way even though they have different coverage. This time I'm going to start from our class research guide, which is uncg.libguides.com slash cst300. You can see that in the description box below, the direct link to this guide. Um, this is also something that you can access through your course canvas page by clicking on library resources. So this is the second way you can access CMMC. You can go to the Finding Articles tab, and you'll see it has its own box on this research guide because it is really our most important database to know about. So I'm going to click that, and you'll see it takes me to the same database we just looked at. We've just gotten to it from a different access point. The most important thing is that you get to it through the library somehow, whether it's through that course guide, whether it's through the databases page. Um, you want to make sure that you're accessing it through the library so that you can get access to all of the great content that's in here. So I am going to um, try a search here for um, relational dialectic theory. When I am doing research um, in communication studies, specifically looking at the um, like looking for these primary research articles about theories. I usually start with a theory and I'm just going to show you here. I'm going to click search um, and you can see that I get 137 um, articles that come back or sources that come back. Uh, I can do something here which you saw me do if you watched the video about finding books. I can put this theory in quotes and that forces a phrase search for relational dialectics theory, those three words in that order. So I'm searching again, it's taken a second here. And I have 135, so pretty similar, so not a big difference here. Um, so I see here I have a, an article about um, Chinese corporate leaders, web-based messages, um, I see a source here. This is a conference paper, and so for many of your CST 300 classes, you actually won't be able to use that kind of source. Uh, I'll show you in just a moment um, how you can um, filter it so that you don't get those. Um, here's one about physician communication. Here's one about um, romantic uh, and competing cross-cultural discourses. Here is one about um, communicating tensions and challenges during the end of life journey. Uh, we're seeing a whole lot of different stuff come up here. So what this tells me is that this is a theory that can be applied in a lot of different applications, a lot of different contexts. But let's say that I am interested particularly in seeing if there's anything in here um, that applies this to friendship. So I am gonna do friendships here. Um, and I see um, just seven results. 
One thing I can do here, and this is a, an advanced search option, um, I can end friendship early. I can end it friend and put an asterisk there. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to search for any word that begins with this root. So friends, friendship, friendships, and we'll see if that makes a difference with our search here. So it brought us back two more um, results, so nine different sources that I'm looking at here. Now, if I want to make sure, because again, I see one of these conference papers, if I want to make sure that I'm only getting scholarly peer-reviewed articles, I can click this limit over here on the left side. So that took me back down to seven. Seven sources about relational dialectics theory and something related to friend, friends, friendship, anything that starts with that root. So when we use this and here that's built in, it just helps us narrow things down. So I'm going to take a look. I'm just going to look at this first one here. Front row friendships, relational dialectics, and identity negotiations by mature students at university. So this is pretty common. You see a situation here where we are talking about the application of relational dialectics theory to a pretty specific audience, mature students at university. So I clicked on the title to get to this page, which has more detailed information. You've probably heard me say before. In a library resource, click the title, and that's probably going to get you the information that you need. So here I can see all of the information I would need to cite this in APA. If I scroll down a bit, I can see the abstract of the article. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start looking for those clues to determine if this is a primary research article. So um, I see already right off the bat, and I'm going to highlight it on my screen, in this interpretive study. This particular author actually even uses first person language. I examined the tensions. I employed a range of interviewing methods. Um, but this is definitely making it very clear to me that this author, uh, Neil O'Boyle, actually conducted the study that's being discussed here. And just as we talked about before, if I want to confirm that, I'm going to click this PDF full text. And I'm going to look for that method section. So again, I'm seeing lots of citations within here, and that's to be expected. I want to know that Neil O'Boyle did some secondary research before actually engaging in his own study. Um, so I'm seeing lots and lots of good um, stuff there. And then I've gotten to my section that's called method. And just like in the article example we looked at in our first video in this series, there's also a results section and after quite a while so you see the results look a little different here this was a qualitative study with interviews and focus groups so most of the results are um, just sort of quotes directly from participants in the study and then i just keep going it's a lot there and then a discussion section where those results are um, described in more detail and the implications are explored so if I decide that I like this article, I am going to actually just go back one screen, take me back to this page with all that good information, and I'm going to do one of two things here. Um, my suggestion um, and what works for me well in my personal research is to use the email button here. And the email button lets you put your email address in. Um, you want to give it a subject. I'm going to call it Front Row Friendships. Um, so that I can kind of remember what this is. Um, it's going to send me a permalink. That's what they call it in this database, a permalink back to this page. So a stable URL that will get me back here no matter what, um, no matter you know how long it's been since I looked at it the first time. Um, and then I am also going to ask it to, these are already checked. I'm going to uncheck HTML. All I care about is getting that full text PDF. It's going to attach that to the email it sends me. And I'm also going to ask it to change the citation format and send me an APA citation. Um, and we will have a short APA video where we talk about what I would do with a citation like this when I get it. But just know it's probably not 100% correct, um, but it's probably a great starting point for you to work with. So I'm going to click send, and those three things will be sent to me. A permalink back to this page, PDF attachment, and an APA citation. 
Now, if you don't like to email yourself different stuff, if that's not the way you organize your research, um, you wanna use this permalink button here. Um, so this permalink right here um, gives me, it generates a permanent URL, a more stable URL, and I'm gonna copy and paste that. I'm just gonna go ahead and create a new Google Doc um, and say that this is you know, one of the places that I'm keeping track of my research. So I have pasted that in. Um, back over here, I just want to mention, you know, you will also have a, a web address up here, just like you would with anything you're looking at online. Um, but this is usually not as stable as what we have here. So in order to save yourself some frustration, I would definitely click that permalink. And another thing that you can do is click on the site button. If you're not emailing it to yourself, you're not going to get that citation sent. Um, and you can copy and paste this. Um, I usually paste in here, or you can paste as plain text. You are going to play with it later, but you'll see that copying and pasting that, it's not perfect, it's not quite where I need it. We'll talk a little bit more about that in our video about using APA resources. So this is just a brief overview of how you can use communication and mass media complete in order to locate primary research articles. One thing, I'm going to go back to my results list here, and I just want to point out, you know, we had that nice checkbox we could use to limit to scholarly or peer-reviewed articles. There's no checkbox for primary research articles. So it's really about you looking at that abstract, looking at the article to make sure that you're seeing those clues that we've talked about. And if you have questions about searching, if you're not finding the kind of sources you expect, um, or if you're having trouble identifying those primary research articles, please feel free to contact me. My email address is jedale2 at uncg.edu. And I will see you again for one last video.